Hello everyone, I'm Patrick Garrity and I cover topics about vulnerability management, disclosure, exploitation, and scoring systems that I believe are valuable for cybersecurity researchers and vulnerability management professionals. Today, I'll be diving into the Common Vulnerability Scoring Systems Public Preview, known as CVSS version 4, which was released on June 8th. This updates piqued my curiosity about what the changes bring and the potential impacts on the use of CVSS scoring within vulnerability management programs. CVSS is a published standard used by organizations worldwide and arguably the most widely adopted vulnerability scoring system in the world. CVSS is maintained by a special interest group known as a SIG as a part of first.org, and their mission is to continue to improve CVSS. The common vulnerability scoring system provides a way to capture the principal characteristics of a vulnerability and produce a numerical score reflecting its severity. The score ranges from 0 to 10 in increments of 0.1. The numerical score can then be translated into a qualitative representation. This is what you see known as low, medium, high, and critical vulnerabilities. And this helps organizations properly assess and prioritize their vulnerability management processes. So let's take a look at what the impacts are with the version 4 update of CBSS. The high-level goals of CVSS version 4 are to provide finer granularity, eliminate downstream scoring ambiguity, introduce supplemental attributes for vulnerability response, and enhance its applicability to OT, ICS, and IoT environments. The CVSS SIG highlights some of the challenges with the previous version, CVSS 3.1. These include that the CVSS base scoring is being used as a primary input to risk analysis. Not enough real-time threat and supplemental impact details represented. The scoring system only being applicable to IT systems. Scores published by vendors are often high or critical, seven or above. Insufficient granularity, and the math seems overly complicated. Kudos to the CVSS SIG for acknowledging some of the challenges and downfalls of CVSS version 3.1 as they look forward to version 4.0 in this public preview and how they can improve and enhance CVSS. So let's take a quick look at some of the new features introduced in CVSS version 4. We'll use the CVSS 3.1 to CVSS 4.0 mapping diagram that I created and have shared on previous LinkedIn posts and videos. In CBSS version 4, some of the updates include finer granularity and base metrics, including the addition of attack requirements and enhanced user interaction granularity. There's removal of downstream scoring ambiguity by separating availability, confidentiality, and integrity metrics into separate metrics for vulnerability system and subsequent system. There's simplification of threat metrics and improved scoring impact, which I'm excited about. There's the addition of supplemental metrics, such as automatable recovery, value density, vulnerability response effort, and provider urgency. And finally, there's enhanced applicability to OT, ICS, and IoT environments with the inclusion of safety metric values in the environmental metric. Now, I can understand this feels very overwhelming but I'm gonna try and break down some of the different concepts and how they work in the new update. In CVSS version four, CVSS has introduced a new concept that's pretty cool called nomenclatures. This categorizes the scoring types within CVSS. These nomenclatures emphasize that CVSS is not just about the base score. Very, very important to highlight is it's not an indication of risk. There are four scoring types in CVSS. CVSS-B, which is the base score, includes the base metrics. CVSS-BT, which is the base score plus the threat score, which incorporates base metrics and threat metrics. Then we have CVSS-BE. This includes the base plus environmental score, which combines the base metrics with the environmental metrics. Last, we have the CVSS-BTE score. This uses base threat and environmental scores and includes the base metrics, threat metrics, and environmental metrics. So I can understand at this point if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by these new nomenclatures within CVSS version 4 in CVSS in general. 
I felt the same way as I dove into the CVSS version for public preview. So let's take a step back and we'll explore how these scores work using the CVSS version for metrics. Now moving on to the CVSS base score or CVSS-B, which utilizes the base metrics. These metrics are selected by the supplier vendor and are the score you see published by CVSS and populated into the National Vulnerability Database. This is then integrated into most vulnerability management tools. If you currently use CVSS today for vulnerability prioritization, it's highly likely that you're primarily relying on the CVSS base score. Despite the pervasive use of the CVSS base score for vulnerability prioritization, it's important to highlight. The CVSS SIG notes that the CVSS base score, CVSS-B, represents technical severity and only takes into consideration the attributes of the vulnerability itself. It is not recommended to use this alone to determine remediation priority. Big no-no. Now let's take a quick look at CVSS-BT score. This combines base metrics with threat metrics to calculate a comprehensive score. Threat metrics are selected by the consumer, typically the vulnerability management teams using CVSS. Worth noting is that the threat metrics changed from version 3.1 to 4, which simplified the metrics, which now make it much more usable. I'm a big fan of these changes. Specifically, the threat metrics category now includes only one metric called exploit maturity. And this has attributes of not defined, attacked, POC, and unreported. Keep in mind that the current defaults for exploit maturity of not defined assumes a worst case scenario of attack. So in order to truly get the benefits from this metric in order for them to be useful, you need to assess not only if a vulnerability has been attacked, but also if it hasn't had any activity reported. The threat metrics group addressed reasonable worst case scenarios with the base score. By using threat intelligence and enriching the CVSS score, to make it a CVSS-BT or a CVSS-BTE score. And this addresses the concerns with CVSS base scores being way too high. This score is likely the most achievable step for organizations beyond the CVSS base score that can have a significant impact with the least amount of work as it doesn't necessarily require you to get context related to your assets. So I think this is a great and achievable place to start. Now let's take a look at the CVSS-BE score, which combines base metrics and environmental metrics to calculate a score that incorporates the environmental context. Environmental metrics values are intended to align with an organization's asset management database. However, the complexity of environmental scoring can be an overwhelming process to most. It raises questions about how many organizations have asset attributes populated that align with CVSS metrics. The inclusion of modified base metrics and environmental security requirements in CVSS version 4 adds three different ways to modify confidentiality, integrity, and availability metrics. Moreover, the addition of safety metric further increases complexity, as these metrics are not provided by vendors and it falls on end user to enrich CVSS for calculating the score. This complexity may deter many organizations from adopting CVSS environmental scores and the CVSS-BE score. Now let's take a look at the CVSS-BTE score, which integrates base metrics, threat metrics, and environmental metrics to provide the most comprehensive score. When used properly, CVSS highlights that CVSS-BTE scores encompass more comprehensive attributes than what many highly respected third-party security organizations consider when generating their proprietary risk ratings. I think it's interesting, this is very aspirational, but it could provide an industry-wide standard for risk scoring, which is great. From my perspective, adopting CVSS BTE seems like it could be an aspirational goal for most vulnerability management teams as it requires a deep understanding of CVSS, a comprehensive asset inventory, comprehensive vulnerability inventory, and comprehensive threat intelligence. Then you need to have the sophistication to map these different attributes into the CVSS scoring system metric terminology. This provides a big opportunities for vendors like Nucleus, 
to automate a lot of the work that would need to go in in order to achieve the CVSS-BTE score. So that's the quick overview on the new nomenclatures within CVSS version 4, which hold promising potential for revitalizing a scoring system that has become somewhat stagnant. However, with the increased complexity with CVSS scoring, particularly the broad set of environmental metrics, the addition and changes in the threat metrics, it, it's possible that this makes it challenging for widespread adoption of the more valuable nomenclatures CVSS-BT, CVSS-BE, and CVSS-BTE. I really think that it's important for the vulnerability management tools to rally around these concepts to help automate this for vulnerability management teams. Now let's take a look at these supplemental metrics, which were added as an addition in CVSS version four. These metrics provide a description and measurement of extrinsic attributes related to a vulnerability. Their usage and importance are determined by the scoring consumer, allowing for context specific evaluation. It's important to note that the supplemental metrics do not directly impact the final calculated CVSS score, such as CVSS BTE. Rather, they offer additional information about the vulnerability's extrinsic characteristics. These supplemental metrics provide valuable insights but are entirely optional, allowing the suppliers and vendors to select the most relevant metrics for each use. So let's take a look at each metric. The safety metric focuses on vulnerabilities within systems aligned with safety requirements. It acknowledges that safety-related impacts may arise from exploiting such vulnerabilities. This could be useful in an ICS environment. The automatable metric considers the extent to which steps in the kill chain can be reliably automated. Factors like network accessibility, weaponization requirements, delivery channels, and exploit reliability contribute to this assessment. This could be useful in the automation of an SSV decision tree, which we've seen with CISA. Next, we have the metric, which is provider urgency, which serves as a standardized means to incorporate additional urgency assessments from vendors. It enables consistent communication of urgency and product security advisories. So this could be really interesting to read as a CVSS score uh, gets posted, that this is something that is urgent and critical to review. Next, there's the recovery metric, which describes a component or system's ability to recover services after an attack. It assesses whether recovery is automatic, requires user intervention, or if services are irrecoverable. Once again, I think this is likely useful in an ICS environment. Next is the value density metric, which captures the concentration or diffusion of value within a system. It helps distinguish between systems with diffuse value, like email accounts and those with concentrated value, such as database systems or web servers. From my perspective, these metrics could be useful if used for making decisions using a framework like stakeholder-specific vulnerability categorization. These metrics, though, are likely to go largely unused by most, but could be incredibly valuable if they're embraced widely by the vendor and supplier community. So today, I appreciate everyone taking the time to learn a bit more about the common vulnerability scoring system and its complexities and the update with CVSS version 4. It's clear that there are significant enhancements that have been made to previous versions limitations. I also think it's important to acknowledge that vulnerability management is a very complex topic and there are no silver bullets. The CVSS scoring system is interesting. I think that with the incorporation of threat intelligence, environmental metrics, and looking to the aspirational goal of what CVSS-BTE is, it'll be great to see what adoption and how this might go mainstream within the vulnerability management space. I'm super excited to see the evolution of CVSS and other types of scoring systems like the exploit prediction scoring system, which can lead to more effective vulnerability management strategies and outcomes. Thank you so much for joining me as I've highlighted some of the changes within the CVSS version 4 public preview, and I look forward to continuing to talk about different topics in vulnerability management. If you're interested in engaging with me, please feel free to reach out on LinkedIn, make comments on my posts, send me a message. I love to learn more and engage with the vulnerability management community. 
Have a great day.